Yes, the Vikings did actually wear horned helmets, but it was for a very specific ritual purpose. And that purpose is... Okay, I got this stupid thing on my head again. Let's take it off. Oh, I got another stupid thing on my head up here. <laughs> Look at that. Well, this is for a very specific purpose uh, that I will speak about in this video later on. The horn helmets of Vikings. Now, for someone who has no knowledge uh, about Viking history, they probably think that, um, that when they start, they believe the Vikings wore horn helmets, just like you see in all these cartoons and comic books. But for someone who knows a little bit more about Viking history, they know that the Viking helmets did not have horns. Real, authentic Viking helmets looked something like this. However, the people who are actually advanced in Viking and Germanic Age history, we know that there's a little bit more to the story. So the depictions of Vikings wearing horn helmets comes from artists and operas uh, from around the 1800s, the most famous one being Wagner's Der Ring des Nibelungen. And since then, various artists and comic books have depicted the Vikings as having horned helmets over the past 150 years. Turns out though that the artists of the 1800s were not completely wrong. I'm going to show you a few of the archaeological finds here. Links will be below and also the licensing to these. Um, uh, this one is found in Sweden and is currently being kept at the Swedish History Museum in Stockholm. And that one's believed to be Odin wearing a horned helmet. Another, I wasn't able to find a picture of this one, but it looks just like this. It's the one that I carry on my online shop. It's a duplicate of the one found in Denmark, and it's currently being held at the uh, Viking Museum in Ribe. Uh, that looks like a horn helmet there, too. Another we actually find in Anglo-Saxon England, and this one is called the Finglesham Buckle. It's a belt buckle, and that's being held at the Ashmolen Museum. Another, this one is my personal favorite. Uh, this is called the Torslunda plates that are found in Sweden. And the bottom left, it's interpreted as being a dancing man with a horned helmet leading a berserker into battle, like a pre-fight ritual almost. These are just a few of the images that I found under, you know, Creative Commons licenses and I could use here, but there are a few more that are being uh, have private photos at museums uh, that you can find in the links in the description below, even one from as far as Russia. Now some of these, um, it's very clear um, on some of these archaeological finds that the two horns are actually two ravens. It makes sense and that's why we think all of these figurines are depictions of Odin with his ravens Hugin and Munin, which are, I mean, thought and memory. It makes total sense in a spiritual point of view as I'll show you in just a minute, but these are just figurines, right? Figurines and amulets and artwork depicting horned helmets from the Viking Age or Vendel period just a bit before. Do we have any actual horned helmets in the archaeology? Well, we have to go back a little further back in time for that. This, this one is my favorite. These are called the Vexjö helmets found in Denmark. Also around the same area, dated to the uh, same time roughly, is something called the Grevensvenge figurines. Again, horned helmets from the Bronze Age long before the Viking Age. These are dated to 1000 BC uh, or a little bit after. Here is another. This is one from Germany, dated to about 300 BC. Um, the horns had fallen off, but the points there you see um, attached to where the horns would have gone. And these are the cultures from the Bronze Age and the, the what I like to call the Germanic Tribal Age. Those are the cultures that the Vikings and all the other Germanic peoples uh, descended from and evolved from. Little bonus, you can see here the Celts too also used horn helmets. This one is found uh, from around the same period, and um, this one uh, found at Waterloo in England. And in fact, it seems really like all of us Indo-Europeans used horned helmets even long, long before this. We find extremely ancient rock art and even headdresses from up to 10,000 years ago made from deer antlers even. I'll put links to all these below. And these, these are, you know, not any different to things you will find in modern uh, shamanistic uh, cultures and practices. And you've also seen Heilung wearing these types of things in their performances. So, what does it all mean? Well, now we're going to get a bit spiritual. As usual, we can kind of fill in the missing pieces to the European pagan religions with answers from 
Eastern religions. Hinduism, which is related to the Norse um, uh, paganism, if we go far back in time, it's related to all other uh, uh, Indo-European religions. Other Eastern beliefs, they have the understanding of chakras, right? The Norse had some understanding of the chakras too, as, as I spoke about in this video here. Quite different beliefs and interpretations from the Hindu um, version of chakras, but nevertheless, they believe that there were certain focal points going all up along the body associated with certain certain energies. That part is the same in both beliefs. The Hindus, they actually believe there are more than seven chakras, and at least one of these chakras is not in the body at all, but above the head. They even think there's a few of them above the head, anywhere from a few inches above to a foot above the head. These they like to call the spirit chakra, or the transcendence chakra, or the universal consciousness chakra. The, the idea is basically that you when you open up all the chakras and open up these ones above the head that you will uh, reach enlightenment and reach the you know common universal spiritual consciousness whatever you want to call it i'm doing a shitty job of explaining it and even then the sources that we have on it are kind of all over the place i don't know if anybody has a clear answer on what those chakras are but if you do know please let us know in the comments below but you get the point um so the belief is in the east is that by putting some type of extension of yourself going above the head this helps connect you to and open the chakras up here. This is one of the reasons why they tie up their hair in certain Hindu cultures, and that's also why they wear turbans. Uh, also the warrior classes in ancient Mesopotamia, Sumeria, and even Greece, and when they were all pagan, they wore similar headdresses going up um, just a few inches above the crown of the head. But well, what's all that crap about? That's not Viking stuff, what are you talking about? Well, hold on a second and shut up and I'll tell you. <laughs> one very famous Germanic people had this exact same type of thing too and it was called the Swabian Knot which you have maybe heard of. The Germanic tribes mostly among the war class of the Swabi wore their hair up like this in a knot and we have uh, quite a few attestations of Vikings haircuts wearing some type of lock tied up on the top of their head. You find these types of things all over the world. The Japanese war class, the samurai, they all wore some type of top knot above their head. I think the horned helmets are for the exact same purpose. But you guys can see the difference here, right? In the east, this energy above the head, that are the chakras there, they are associated with, you know, higher consciousness, enlightenment, meditation, uh, those types of things. Whereas in the Germanic world, it's associated with war spirit. Uh, as usual, Eastern and Germanic um, spirituality, it makes a lot of the same types of discoveries, but they use it for different purposes, of course. Hindu people were more peaceful and meditation and all that, but the Germanic peoples wanted to use this energy for war because that's been a much bigger part of our history. So these horns or the hair knot up here functions like an antenna almost for bringing in the war spirit. Um, side note, guess who just won the UFC World Championship last weekend? Yeri Piotrzka, who uses this too and calls it his antenna. I don't think he knows the full history of it but um, yeah, that's what he says at least. So this is actually part of what Odin is, what Odin's name means. That's that's why of course it's depicted on Odin a lot of these things with um, uh, his helmets with his two ravens. That's why Odin is the god that is most associated with war. That's why in Havamal Odin speaks about how he knows various forms of magic to help his men win the battle. That's also how it happened in Heimskringla, where Odin was attested as a real human being that basically helped his warriors and, and granted them victory in battle. That's why after Odin died, they would shout his name in battle in hopes that this spirit would come to them and grant them the victory in battle. Now, I don't think they went in battle with their horned helmets. <laughs> that would end up falling off pretty easily and being pretty worthless. But what they probably did was have some sort of spiritual leader in the back of the battle or right in the center of their army with a horned helmet acting as the antenna, doing the dance, doing the rituals, doing the invocation of Odin, then bringing that spiritual energy in and then distributing it out, um, uh, that spirit to all of the soldiers fighting. 
I don't think it was used just in war though, these horn helmets. These things have been used by shamans from Sami or Siberian cultures, um, but with them it's usually in the form of some sort of antlers, like deer antlers. It's for the same purpose um, at the end of the day, same purpose here as it is to get to this frenzy, to get to this altered state of consciousness, this ecstatic energy that Odin is, to get into the, you know, states of mind in order to do their shamanistic type work and rituals. And that's also why Odin is associated with the feminine art of Scyther. That's also why reindeer and deer were always thought of as very spiritual and enlightened animals and their antlers have been used in many various spiritual practices. Their antlers are up here on them absorbing this energy 24-7. It's also why deer antler velvet is one of the most powerful natural steroid and testosterone boosters in the world. And reindeer skins and drums like you see behind me here um, have been great for spiritual practices, especially used um, in the north of Europe and, and anywhere where reindeer are really, that they, they bring this sort of energy because like I said, their antlers are reaching up there, attracting this energy from the universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it. It all lines up, the history, the evidence, and I have some personal experience with this, I must say, um, but as usual, I did not share those things out in the open on YouTube, but I share those things on Patreon. Uh, but hey, this is just my beliefs. Maybe the Vikings just wore these helmets because it made them feel pretty, okay? <laughs> so, believe whatever you like, but that's all I have to say for today. The answer is yes, the Vikings used uh, horn helmets, but there is some sort of ritualistic spiritual um, use associated with them. So, hope you enjoyed. That's all for today. Vi ses nästa gång.